بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم so next thing we'll talk about something called submitting questions now submitting questions are a little bit important especially if you are uh, trying to understand a specific networks uh, basically whenever you see any ip address range you should be you should be in a position to identify the range or the subnet mask to be used or if this specific subnet mask is used what is the range of ip addresses or what is the network id these kind of things and also when you are uh, when you are trying to uh, answer the questions like in the certification exams also you will be getting some examination questions based on the subnets so at then you you should be able to understand the subnets at the same time you should be in a position to identify the subnets the network ids or the broadcast ids or any anything whatever is required whenever you see the designs or whenever you see the questions so probably we'll be focusing on that particular part so we'll we'll go with some simple examples first so the first thing is here uh, let's say let's assume that this is your ip maybe ip of the pc or ip of the router whatever it is so let's say this ip is assigned to any one of the device in the network now when this ip is assigned so basically you want to figure out uh, anything it can the question can be anything so i'm just trying to cover up all the questions here maybe you want to figure out what is a subnet mask maybe you want to find the subnet mask of course the range uh, maybe or maybe you want to figure out the network id because when we do routing advertisements uh, when we get into routing topics we need to know the network id in order to advertise in order to write a route on the router or maybe you want to know the broadcast ID last ip of the range or what is the range of the ips or if you are going with flsm then basically how many subnets you get so these kind of questions you get in the examinations or maybe you want to figure out okay as per this ip how many uh, valid addresses uh, been assigned or can be assigned in in this network or whatever the, what is the subnet mask so almost all the calculations we did but here we we will be doing the same thing a little bit random random as per the requirement like the first thing we'll try to figure out the subnet mask let's say i want to find the subnet mask now for all your answers basically this slash value or the subnet mask has to be given because if this value is not given then basically you will understand that this is a c class network and the default size of the c class is 256 and the default range starts from 0 and so on to 55 that is something you normally assume if the ip is given but it's not given with a subnet mask or the slash value okay so basically this is like a default subnet or default network size but mostly as i said we'll be using subnets so when you use subnets then you need to know the subnet mask or the slash value so based on this the device will understand what is the range even we we only calculate based on that so for all the questions whatever is given to you so you you will be given these values so based on the slash value we can figure out that slash 26 means 888 it is 24 and 2 bits and if you add 8 bits how much 255 255 255 and if you add 2 bits how much 192 so same thing here slash 26 can be written as this and this is the submit mask information so this is easy you can we did already a couple of examples already in the previous topics now the next thing you may want to find valid host per subnet now let's say okay in this subnet how many valid addresses we can assign valid host per subnet now we already did this calculation in our basic formulas 2 to the power of h minus 2 greater than uh, minus 2 minus 2 is for network id and the broadcast id so which means in order to find this we need to find the h value so if you find the h value you can uh, get the answer so which means the host bits so how to find the host bits so we'll find the host bits first now to find the host bits we can easily do that by using this uh, from total bits total ipv4 address will be 32 bit from that if i subtract how many network bits so the slash value represents what the network bits so if i subtract 26 so the remaining bits how many six so six is your host bits 
So we did all these things. So roughly you can do all these things. I have written steps so that you can understand. So 32 minus 6, uh, sorry, 32 minus 26. It will be 6 host bits, which means if I apply this formula here, 2 to the power of 6 minus 2, 64 minus 2. So the valid host harmony, it is 62. So this is the first example we did with C class, if you remember. So 62 valid addresses I can assign in this subnet. And minus 2 is for network ID and the broadcast ID. So everything revolves around bits here. Now similar way, if you want to figure out how many subnets we get, if it is a C class, so it's a C class address. And if I use FLSM, because in FLSM only we can tell exactly how many subnets we get. In VLSM, we cannot say because the in VLSM the requirement may vary depending upon the requirements. So if I go with a fixed size, so fixed size is 64. So if you remember, we get four subnets because 256 divided by 64, you can do this way or, or basically you can use this formula to the power of n. So n is nothing but your converted bits. What is n? The converted bits, which means it's a C class address. So in C class, by default, how many network bits? By default, there are 24 network bits because in C class, there are three network portions and one host portion. So we got 26 here. So 26 is nothing but 24 plus two. So this two is your converted bits. So the default plus converted, right? So default is 24 and converted are two. So I'm going to apply this formula here to the power of two. How many subnets we get? Four subnets. So if I divide any C class network of 256 size in 64, 64, 64, 64, you get four subnets. So four into 64, it's 256. So this is how you generally calculate. So these are nothing new. We did the same thing, but randomly, depending upon the requirement, you have to choose the formulas. Now, the next thing we'll try to figure out the range. Of course, the questions most of the time will be asked, what is the network ID? Uh, what is the broadcast ID? So even whether you want to find the network ID or the broadcast ID, so basically you need to know the range. So the range, we know how to write the range. The range is always written based on the 2 to the power of H value. So we already calculated the H value here. So the H value is 6. And 2 to the power of 6 is 64 is the size of the network. So which means my range will go from 0 to 63. So the range will be 0 to 63, 64 to 127. We know this, how to write the range, 128 to 181 and 192 to 255. So basically, you don't need to write the complete range. Uh, you just need to figure out this number comes in which range. Because as per the question given to you, this is the range what we can write. Now 122 comes in the range of this range, which means 192, 168, 1.64, or 192, 168, 12 actually. So this is not uh, one. So as per the question, this has to be 12. Okay, so just correct this one. So this has to be 12, which means as per the question, 192, 168, 12.64 is my network ID. And 192, 168, 12.127 is the broadcast ID. Okay, so in, when, when the question asks, you need to be more specific because sometimes the question may be asked like, what is the first IP of this range, valid IP of the range? Now the first valid IP of this range is, now this is the first IP. But it is, it is not a valid because it is a network ID. So the next will be 192.168.12.65. 65 is the first valid IP. Or second valid IP means 66. Or last uh, valid IP means it's going to be 192.168.12.126. 126 is valid, whereas 127 is a broadcast ID. So you may get questions randomly like that. I'll try to go through with some of the questions in the last to probably understand, you know, the questions will not be straightforward. But here, whatever the calculations I'm, I'm doing, they are a little bit straightforward uh, to find the answers based on the calculations.